Darla and Mark. This is our 26 foot 2017 Sunseeker Class C that we named Serenity. We travel the U.S., work camp in the summer and usually the fall. We're amateur photographers, landscape and wildlife, who love birding, hiking, history, cemeteries, horror movies, and heavy metal music. Join us on our adventures. Good morning. We are leaving the campground. I filmed a little bit of our campsite, and so I was just going to show you a little bit on the way out. But this is a very nice campground. It's all pull through sites, um, they are all in the treed area. And uh, very nice. It's called Galesburg East. Head south toward US 150 West. Galesburg East Campground. Um, it is near Galesburg. We went into Galesburg to get supplies uh, when we got here uh, the day before yesterday. Yesterday we it's had. 400 feet. Turn right onto US 150 West. Yesterday we had plans to go into um, a town to see Wyatt Earp's birthplace. Um, it was not open anyway. Take the next right onto US 150 West. And it rained, literally rained all day long yesterday. So, and, and not just a drizzle, because if it had been a drizzle, we probably would have gone anyway. But we didn't want to drive 40 miles in the pouring rain to uh, uh, the place where um, we could not go in anyway. We, all we could have done was seen the outside of it. And after reading about it, they're not even sure it's really the, <laughs> really the house. On US so, 150 West for three quarters of a mile. Uh, that is my Google GPS in the car. Um, I don't really follow it closely because we follow the um, we follow the RV GPS because it takes into account the height and width of the RV and the weight of the RV. So we don't go on bridges we shouldn't be on that we're too heavy for. We don't go under overpasses that we're too tall for. That kind of thing. It messes up occasionally, um, but for the most part, we've had that GPS since we bought our first RV. So it's mm, probably eight years old now, seven years old now. And it um, it still it's works. Mile. Take the ramp to I seventy four. It still works great. Um, still doesn't take us. Uh, you know, we've only had a couple of instances where um, it's taken us, for example, to a, a close. It was a closed road, and obviously, a GPS is only as good as the information that's in take the, the ramp system. I seventy four. So it. Um, it really only messes up when it doesn't have the correct information for the route we're on. And uh, we are, let's say, we are hitting 74 again this morning. Um, we are. A quarter mile, merge onto I 74. We are leaving Illinois and we are headed to Iowa. And I have my Iowa shirt on today. We went to the Field of Dreams. We worked, actually worked, our first work camping job was in Iowa. in upper uh, on the upper Iowa River in Dorchester uh, which is in the Driftless area and if you've never been there you you need to go because it's just a gorgeous area it um, uh, you know people think of Iowa and they think of flat and cornfields and it did have a lot of cornfields but it was not flat at all in that area. Um, apparently Driftless is where the glaciers um, came through and they missed that little corner. And it sits on the Minnesota-Wisconsin border, just in that little corner. And that was our first work camping job and it was just beautiful. The campground Upper Iowa Resort um, is in Dorchester and it's right on the Upper Iowa River. And it's beautiful. It's got a little spring-fed um, natural pool there. It's not like a swimming pool per se, where you fill it up with water and put chlorine in it. It's a it's a natural spring that comes in there, and it's just gorgeous. And there's tons of frogs, and the kids love it. And um, 
it has different owners now. When we worked there, it was um, Bob and Christy Hager, and it was our first work camping job, and I was also still working uh, my online job then, doing payroll for um, one hotel, and then later it became two hotels, but at that point, it was still just part-time, and I was uh, doing an online job for the hotel that I had worked for, and I was also running the office there, and I cleaned cabins some, um, and Mark worked grounds. He did the mowing and um, that kind of stuff, and um, really enjoyed it um, a lot, and the Hagers are uh, really nice people. Um, and apparently, though, recently they sold it to a young couple, and my goodness, I cannot think of their names. Um, forgive me, I saw it on uh, their Facebook post, but I do not remember their names. But their young family have um, uh, small children, and they're running that campground now, and it looks like they're doing a beautiful job. It looks like they've remodeled the office, and they put in some new seasonal sites there. Uh, they already had a lot of seasonal sites, but um, that I think is there is it's the perfect place if you lived somewhere around there to park your RV for the summer and go. It's just a beautiful place. You can canoe down the Upper Iowa River um, or canoe from somewhere else down the Upper Iowa River to the campground. You can put in there too. Uh, tubing, um, just it, and they rent all that to uh canoes kayaks and tubing and i don't know how i really got off on that but iowa that's that's my point and we while we were working there we went to the field of dreams which is where the movie was filmed has the baseball diamond is still there the cornfield is still there we had a ball like walking out of the cornfield onto the baseball field and uh, and all of that and I have a shirt it says um, is this heaven and it says no it's Iowa and then it says field of dreams so there's another one of my nerdy things I love that movie and I have had this shirt for that many years so that would have been 2015 I believe when we when we worked there and went and visited the field of dreams and so we were going to Iowa this morning, uh, and I just had to wear my shirt. So uh, I, I am big on these like souvenir top shirts, and so I have quite a few of them. Uh, but we are headed someplace we have never been in Iowa, which is Union Grove State Park. And uh, it looks very pretty from the website. They have a waterfall, uh, hiking trails, and that is the plan for there is that we are not going to go out and drive somewhere. We are going to stay at the state park tomorrow. Hopefully the weather will be okay. There's a lot of rain moving through this area, but we are moving about um, oh, 200 miles west of here. So hopefully um, the weather will have improved there. Um, by then I think there's a slight chance of rain but if it's just drizzling we'll get out and hike in that anyway we don't mind that too much <laughs> we got used to it in um, in Oregon <laughs> but um, it, uh, so we don't really mind it if it's especially if it's just a light drizzle um, so we're on the road today like I said on the interstate so so far there's not much to see on the interstate I'll show you if there is um, and if not, then I will show you around at the state park when we get there. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I did have a haircut and I think it looks a lot better. I was getting a little shaggy <laughs> and with my, I've increasingly, uh, I, I have a lot of gray hair. I'm already gray headed, but, um, it's more and more, there's less and less of the, uh, dirty blonde and brown, light brown color that um, that is my natural color and there's more and more gray and for those of you who have gray hair you'll know what I'm talking about. The texture of your hair changes tremendously. I mean it just, it's gotten uh, it's always been thick 
and uh, a little wavy, but it has gotten very coarse and um, not as wavy, but um, but it does have a mind of its own. And so I went shorter. Um, I'm probably going to keep it short for the summer. I, not that it wasn't short anyway. It was, but I went shorter. And um, so I'm happy with it. And uh, I'm still wearing my glasses. I do wear contacts, but my uh, allergies have been horrid. Um, I'm hoping that improves as we get further out west. Um, we are steadily moving that way. I uh, have mentioned in prior videos, uh, in case you haven't watched, uh, I have we have accepted a job in Grand Teton National Park this summer. We'll be living at the uh, employee campground um, near where we, where we will be working. And we have to be there. We have to check in uh, with our job and the campground on June 1st. That's our day, and so we have to be there then. We have completed all of the paperwork that they've sent us so far. We did the background check paperwork. We did the motor vehicle uh, records paperwork. We did our new employee information. The next thing, from what I understand, we'll be getting an email for onboarding, which will have our you know, bank information for our paychecks and our non information and those things which we still have to present when we get there like with all jobs but we're very excited about this job um, and uh, I probably will do a whole video about the job and work camping in general uh, but that is what we do that's how we make money is we um, we do have some income but we do need more uh, because we still do owe on the RV and we owe on the car and um, you know we have the normal bills um, and what our income is not enough to cover everything so we do need um, additional income and so we work usually in the summer we work at we pick a place we want to be and we work there this year we got a really late start and we offered tons of jobs uh, I, I, it looks like people are find, having trouble finding work campers this year. So if you're interested in work camping, I think this would be your year to do it because, um, I mean, just tons of jobs out there. Um, we use work camper news, um, which is a great resource. It has all kinds of jobs and, um, uh, and then we also are members of work at KOA and we have worked at a lot of KOAs over the years. So that's that's a, it in a nutshell, but I'll do a longer job, of, uh, a longer bit about that later uh, if anybody's interested. And in so that way, uh, I won't, you won't be a captive audience. You can uh, watch that if you want and not watch it if you don't want. Um, so anyway, uh, on our way to Iowa and hopefully to a great adventure tomorrow uh, seeing the um, the waterfall is what I'm looking forward to so we'll see how that goes
we had a little bit of an unexpected stop here in Iowa on our way to the state park. We stopped here at the Herbert Hoover National Historic Site. We're about to walk uh, to see his cottage where he was born and um, his gravesite. I'll show you a little more of that as we as we go. So this is the birthplace cottage down at the end here. To see what the other buildings are, but there is a marker here. First president of the United States born west of the Mississippi River. <laughs> Filming? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Just a sec. Oh, you're supposed to go out this door. Yeah. Look at the old sewing machine. That's cool. There's the outhouse. This is the schoolhouse. Be careful there. They're big feet. Yeah.
swap places. We took a walk from the visitor center over to the grave site. This is where Herbert Hoover and his wife are buried. There's Herbert Hoover's grave and his wife. A pretty little green park with a flag, an eagle, wooded, very green. It's a beautiful final resting place for a president. Not sure how much you can uh, see that we're going through a big farming area and I just think it's so pretty. Um, all of these different Lots of farming land and we keep passing these farms with these pretty farmhouses and big old barns and some silos and this is one of my favorite scenery. Some people think this is boring. I don't find this boring at all. I think this is um, farmland, farm country is some of uh, the prettiest places in this country um, the big farms and I, I love the ones that look like they've been there for generations so I just thought I would uh, show you a little bit of that we are on 218 North and we're about we're less than an hour from the state park we're going to at this Union Grove State Park here for another probably 40 miles or so and then um, we'll have about 8 miles or so when we get off here <laughs> to the state park. But I'm really enjoying driving through this. I'm really enjoying this uh, riding through this beautiful countryside here. This is Union Grove State Park. We are in our campsite. It's just a little unlevel in places, but we managed to find a spot that was it's good front to back. It's just slightly off side to side, and it's not bad enough that we can't live with it. So that's what we're doing. We're hooked up to electric. We're hooked up to water. We have sewer, but we don't need it. This is one of those state parks that actually has full hookups. We've been spotting some indigo buntings around. I don't see them now, but there were indigo buntings here a few minutes ago. So this is our campsite and we'll be exploring here, hopefully seeing a waterfall. <laughs> 